Welcome to Land Tamer's Stream. It is Saturday afternoon and it's time to lab, people. Uh, got some good stuff to talk about with the stream, some new tools to help fellow students and myself, of course, related to the stream. Um, I'm going to share those here in a moment and we're going to do some RIP labs, some review stuff. We're going to do some RIP authentication and RIP v2 uh, summarization labs, just as a review uh, for this afternoon. So let me pull up some new cool stuff. To show you guys, I have a new Google Docs uh, share, and I just want to kind of walk through some of this for this is my agenda here today. The agenda, by the way, is in Google Docs now. They will always be in Google Docs. I have, for example, uh, first talk about stream business Discord. We'll, we'll actually talk about that first. So if you have not yet joined uh, the Discord server, there's been all kind of activity going on in here, guys. So and gals. So if you if you're interested in this, uh, we do chat. You know, while the stream is offline, we chat about study stuff. Um, I have uh, several channels in here. I'll talk about. You know, we've got general channel. We've got stream updates. This is you know just basically before I'm about to go on stream or here's some new stream stuff. Uh, labbing. This can get technical. Um, there's some good labbing stuff in here. Documents. Nice thing about Discord is you can post documents in here. You can post links. Um, you can ask for help in a lab, things like that. Uh, vlog topics, nothing in there yet. Fun, just crazy fun stuff. And then links, links that I find. Some of these I share in the stream, like uh, you'll see in the description here in the video. I've got a couple links, but some of them I don't necessarily share in here. This is just kind of where I and other people can put in interesting links that you know you think might be cool. And then if you'd like to, if you're online and you got to the point where you wanted to actually join in and chat, we can do voice chat too, um, live during the stream. You can join in, say things, shout out, you know, ask questions, whatever. That's the, uh, you'll have to ask me, you know, to be added to that voice channel beforehand. And of course, you'll have to, you know, ask that you be a, a sub, a subscriber to the YouTube channel. Anyway, that's Discord. A lot of cool stuff going on there. And then, so if you haven't joined up, I'm going to leave that open also during the, uh, looks like someone's typing now. I'm going to leave this open during the stream. And I should get notifications on this. Actually, I'm going to leave it up over here. Yeah, so, you know, I can see when someone's typing. Uh, a So, that's how that works. Um, if... And again, a lot of the, you know, ideas behind this channel are social media, connecting with others, collaborating with others, helping each other solve problems that we're having, labbing, and just kind of sharing my own journey. But I like kind of grafting off of the tools that you see gamers using because gamers are typically on the latest edge of technology. You know, this Discord, it can handle hundreds, you know, I don't know what the limit are, probably thousands of people being in the chat at once. It can also handle large number of voice chat streams, which is really cool. So, so yeah, gamers like things to be fast, they like things to be efficient, like things to be responsive. And uh, that's why, you know, I'm still unsure about whether I want to stay on YouTube. There is a YouTube gaming, YouTube has done a lot for gamers. Um, but they're well behind a lot of the tools that Twitch has for streamers. And so I'm considering, you know, experimenting with some Twitch streams along with YouTube. I, I kind of cater to YouTube right now because a lot of the people who are studying for CCIE, I, I say a lot, quite a few are kind of my age. You know, maybe their 30s or their 40s or even 50s, some in their 20s. But you typically are people who are not exposed to the tools that, you know, they may not be exposed to all the tools that gamers use. So this might be kind of new. Twitch, uh, a lot of people I've talked to here on the in the chat have never used Twitch. They may know what it is. They may not know what it is. But that's why I'm kind of sticking with YouTube. It's a little more familiar format. It's been around longer. Um, but we are going to experiment some with Twitch at some point. And I think uh, OBS offers multi... Uh, there's a... Um, multi-broadcast version where you can broadcast simultaneously on both um, YouTube and Twitch. And I may give that a try here at some point. Anyway, that's uh, what else we're going to talk about here. Google Docs Share. So I posted this already in Discord. Um, 
And what I've done is, in case you need the link, um, I'm going to have it here on every, in every YouTube stream slash video going forward. It'll be at the bottom. All these links will be at the bottom from here on out as a template. All my social media links, inc including Discord, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and then I'm, I've also included this Google Docs share. So the Google Docs share will point you to this. And here's some of the stuff I have on here. It's also on my YouTube about page uh, in case you want to reference it or look in here. Or, you know, if you want to, if anybody wants to post anything here or share anything, um, that can be arranged. It's not set up for that now. Right now it's just uh, read only. Right. But I've got, uh, I'm just going to start dumping my PCAPs in here. Uh, I dumped some that I've kept. Yeah, I was keeping them on my hard drive. Now I put them here. Links. Right now this is just my YouTube about page that has these links. Um, that I already mentioned. Um, let me close that out. I'm trying this new browser, guys. I'm trying. This is the Brave browser. I think that's the one I'm using here. And I like it so far. I do like it so far. In, in case you've never seen it, what it does when you open a new page, you know, it has a cooler background. You can change the default page, but it shows you this is the estimated amount of time you've saved by using uh, Brave. Uh, this time we've upgraded HTTP to HTTPS for security. This number of ads we blocked, trackers we blocked. Uh, these are, you know, favorites, etc. So kind of cool. But I know I'm jumping around a little bit here. Going back to the Google Drive contents uh, again, in case you're interested, uh, I've got I've done a couple of blogs for the Packet Pushers. I've done one uh, Packet Pushers show, uh, but I just archived these here in PDF format, and then all the past show agendas are here which the value in this i don't know it, it's good i go back and reference some I, I could search on them for links um i may not remember exactly some of the links i'm like oh yeah i posted a link about that now i can search them you can search them if you want to and then if you watch my videos or streams before you've seen this lab to do i think i already have it open actually i do um, so i imported this into google docs and this has my progress this is the ine workbook in a spreadsheet with a header at the top that shows this is, you know, number completed, the total number, number remaining percent done, how many lab days have passed, how many lab months, how many lab years have been spent. And then this is a projected finish of the workbook. So as I go through these, you know, I've, I've got my first attempt column here. Any weak areas I need to work on speed or, or the concepts. Those are checked, and those are the ones I'm going back through and doing a review on. And then this is when I do practice attempts of these labs. So as you can see right now, I'm about to start MPLS, and I'm currently practi doing practice reviews. Uh, what else is in the Google Docs? Uh, the agenda, this is today's agenda. I've got a copy of the blueprint. Um, some capture filters. I don't have many in here, but some of these are kind of particular, and I don't always remember them. Uh, feel free to, you know, make suggestions of others to add in there. I know some of you are really sharp in Wireshark, and that's great. And then I've compiled some of my shortcuts in here, which includes keyboard shortcuts I, I need to get better at, some commands I need to get better at, and TCL scripts. So we've got ping all loopbacks. we got blank and reload a router here in Viral. So... And a lot of these are have come from other people in the stream that have shared these, so I appreciate that. Uh, what else? And then these are just some of my weak areas. And that's it right now, but, you know, this may grow. Feel free to make suggestions or comments or feedback here in the video, you know, below this video. I would love to hear them. Uh, and we're going to just work out of this, right? We're going to keep this browser page open. This is what we're going to work out of during the stream. Now, meat chunks. Oh, sorry, I skipped... I skipped another vlog topic, and that is, I put, I've talked about this in Discord a little bit, but I have considered, in order to pace things a little better, um, changing my attack plan. And, and I need to document an attack plan, and I sort of have, but I want to I want to put that here in in Google Docs. But my attack plan up until now has essentially been. Um, now let me open the, the workbook so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. My attack plan has been, you know, basically blitz an entire section at a time. 
So this is pretty obvious here. I've gone through EIGRP, I've gone through OSPF, uh, redistribution, BGP, and now in the INE workbook, I'm in the MPLS section. So my idea was <clears throat> simultaneous, simultaneously study the workbook for this technology area, MPLS, INE videos, plural site videos, and you know other books that are in Safari Books Online. Kind of blitz MPLS itself. Learn MPLS. Then when I finish the MPLS section, go back and do a sweep of all these weak areas as a review. What I'm finding is that I'm getting stuck too long in the review part. And really, I'm letting too much time go, I think, between reviews and learning new material. And I think what I need to do is, what I'm finding, especially I've started watching videos about MPLS, you know, getting a big, bigger picture of things that really I need to integrate, tech, I, I need to get prepared to integrate the technologies a little better. And I think by by doing a little jumping around, in other words, soon I'll be focusing on MPLS, but I'm going to be mixing in some reviews of the other technologies that I'm weak on throughout. And what that may look like is on a typical night, you know, maybe on a weeknight, I'll do a new lab and then maybe one or two review labs. Or I might do one or two labs in a new section and one review lab. Or, you know, maybe on a Monday night I'll do new material and a Tuesday night go back and do review weak areas. Something like that. Uh, and I tell you, this journey of mine, I, and this is part of why I want to share it and document it and vlog about it, is because it, it you have to be flexible. You have to continue to adapt based on your learning style, based on your life events based on your schedule and what's going on and right now uh, you know I think I need to change it again a little bit um, and, and that's my thinking on that I just want to share that with people love to hear your comments on that um, in discord or, or in YouTube here in the comments all right there's some pretty cool meat chunks and when I say meat chunks you know the theme of this thing of the stream is land tamer we're li not lion tamers but land tamers so you know you carry on the metaphor here meat chunks uh, this is a really good blog um the name of the blogger i need to give a shout out to him and i don't see his name here but i think we go to home It's a cool blog. You should check it out. There, there's a lot of stuff on here. Here we go. Hugh, Hugh Fan, I think. Um, got a CCIE. And I think he uh, took the route switch lab. I think he attempted it, I want to say, four times before he got it. But this is a really good attack plan for the lab. So be sure to check this out. To me, it, you know, it t took a little time to read. And I actually started reading it again. Um, but he has some great advice here about how to attack the lab. He's got some screenshots and stuff. Really good stuff, so recommend that. And I will probably be reading this again, and that's one of my ideas, too, that it left me with, is I need to have a written attack plan for the lab. I need to have a written attack plan for my study, but I also need a written attack plan for the lab itself and for the written. So that is on my to-do list, but a lot may be based on this particular blog. Great blog. Good job, Mr. Fan. I appreciate it. Uh, another thing is Open R routing protocol. So as we know, Facebook, you know, they do a lot of their own thing. Um, they're really le leading the way, you know, in, in scaling networks and scaling infrastructure and this is a good read. I did, I believe I read through just about all of this. Maybe not all of it, but they talk about how Facebook does routing, use this protocol they developed called Open Slash R, maybe is how you say it. But they are, and Peter Lupikoff is a co-writer, author of this article, and very integral to this development. 
really interesting stuff. I, I highly recommend you read it. And if you want a compressed version, um, you can do watch this YouTube video. Uh, it's very good. And it's Peter Lupikoff from INE fame. Forget how many IEs he has, certifications, but really interesting their approach to, you know, the dynamic nature of the, of the network and the networks at Facebook. So, yes, finally, it's time to do a few labs here. Um, again, I'm in the review section. I'm not ready to start MPLS yet, but I, I plan on doing that sooner than I expected to. I've watched the video today. I watched the first INE video that I have available and uh, really cool. Um, I'll go over that when we do some of the, the labs. But just doing, doing some review and I'm back in the RIP section. We're going to do RIP authentication and RIP summarization. So to start that, uh, I can close this out. I can close that out. This, by the way, ULA um, launched the JPSS-1, which is a weather satellite. Really cool. I did, it was like really early this morning out of Vandenberg, California. Vandenberg Air Force Base, I think is what it's called. Really cool stuff. i post a link to that in Discord, I believe. Fun to watch. Um, but yes, let's uh, get set up the labs here. Let me do a little screen maintenance. Get the YouTube chat out there. And I wonder if, let me just check something here, folks. Uh, let me check Discord. Because I think I turned off notifications. No. All right, not sure about that. Uh, but I have loaded up the basic RIP routing. And what we're going to do here, too, is this is also a link that is in my YouTube About page and is at the bottom of the links in this uh, stream or video description. And, of course, this is the INE topology page that is available to the public. So I'm going to try to reference these more often. This is what we'll be working with here today in this lab, the INE addressing so that is loaded up. Let's put that in order here. And topology is loaded. Now let's talk about doing uh, some requirements. Let's load our, our blank config requirements document. And we'll wor work on the first RIP v2 authentication lab. I don't remember why I had trouble on this. It may have been with the plain text uh, password or clear password. But for some reason, I would mentioned that I had trouble with this lab. So we're going to go over the requirements again. Hope everybody's having a great Saturday. I know I have. Got a chance to get on the motorcycle for a little while. Uh, let's see here. Also, we have a relative, or a relative, my wife, who is... Uh, I think she's over seven to eight months pregnant. I'm not sure. But anyway... Um, I guess it's a tradition now for people to draw or paint on a pregnant woman's stomach, draw some sort of cool design. So anyway, that's what they're doing right now. It's got kind of interesting, fun kind of thing. But we are getting ready. Here are the requirements. Got those loaded up. Okay, configure on tunnel. In DMVPN cloud, right? MD5 key one password Cisco. Spoke routers should learn RIP from R5. And R1 to R6 clear text authentication using ccie okay yeah this is i think was what i had trouble with but if if you remember this topology let me see i got something going on with the window over here excuse me just one moment i'm using brave and there's kind of a a different layout here okay here we go all right so you may remember this but 
uh, for for our topology here, DMVPN. So we've got router five is the hub, and the spokes are one, two, three, and four. And it wants us to use MD5, RIP, RIP v2 MD5 authentication here. But then to throw into the mix, we want a RIP authentication between router one and router six using uh, clear text authentication. So um, let's see here. And man, hey, Debizzle, how's it going, my friend? All is going very well on this Saturday. Able to get a little rip review labs in. Hopefully get our speed going. Hope you're having a good Saturday as well. Weather is nice down here, man. I tell you, it's actually hot here in Orlando area. On the bike today, and uh, usually I stop at a light and I'll pull. Up, I have a flip helmet or flip visor. I flip up the visor, try to keep the heat off a little bit. Um, I'm gonna kind of. learn through the CLI here, but I think what I have to do, let's just say router one uh, for your terminal. Notification bell got unselected. Oh, sorry about that, man. Yeah, so I think we do... Uh, I think is it how does it start? Is it config? Let's load up a router telnet viral one seven zero zero zero. Let's see router one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, my Mac keeps prompting me to upgrade to um OS ten high Sierra and I'm not doing it. <laughs> oh yeah, what kind of bike you got there, Debizel? I think it's four, yeah. And six, uh oh, tell that borrow one zero six. That borrow one zero ten. All right, yeah, we're on one through six, three, four, five, six. And yeah, I'm gonna have to feel my way through this one because. Um, 07 CBR 1000, not familiar with that. Just for fun, let's look it up. See if I have a good window to use here. All my windows are full screen, so what happens is... Oh, 07, okay, mine's... Uh, 2010. Oh man, you got a, you got a, a pocket rocket. <laughs> yeah, I ride a Harley myself. I'm a, the old, the old guy Harley, and I love it. Uh, MD5. Uh, let's see, it's keychain, right? Keychain, and we'll call it. Chain one. Actually, we don't need a keychain here, do we? All right, so let's see. Rip should be running. Show run section rip. Okay, yeah, rip is already running. Router rip. And we're going to say uh, we need to do this on the interface level, though. So on this case, we know that for router one, it's going to be interface tunnel zero. And MD5, uh, authentication. Is it IP rip authentication? Yeah. Mode MD5. Okay. Keyed message digest. We do have to do a key, don't we? Authentication. No. Man, I, I really don't want to have to look this up. I'm trying to see how far I can get on some of these without looking up the um, 
the commands. Uh, let's see. Authentication. Yeah, no, it's not that. Keychain. Keychain, chain one. Key one. And then we're going to say key string Cisco. V Rod. Yeah, I've heard about that. The, uh, people. That's trying to, you know, target kind of a younger crowd. You know, Harley's trying to go, go. They have a stigma being for just the, the old guys with white beards, but uh, <laughs> they're trying to appeal more to younger people, women, and things like that. I'm trying to think, is there anything else I need to, I don't think I need to define a send lifetime. Run section key. Key one, key string, Cisco. Seems like, okay, key chain, chain, chain one, key one, key string, Cisco. I think uh, show key chain. Yeah, valid now. And that's correct because if we don't define any send or accept lifetime, it's going to say always valid. Okay, so that's what we want. So now we need to do on the interface, interface tunnel zero. And we need to say IP rip authentication key chain chain one. IP rip authentication mode MD5. Boom. There we go. I think that's what we need to do. So uh, again, let's just reconfigure this here. Key chain, chain one, key one. And what was it? Yeah, I got to get faster at this stuff. Key string Cisco and then interface T0 IP rip authentication key chain chain one IP rip authentication mode ND5. Okay, that's cool, but it says routers one through six. Let's let's go ahead and configure that as well. Actually, this needs to be done on all the routers. Well, all the DMVPN routers, right? Uh, I guess I could have done that. I have to think efficient with um, text editing. Be as, as efficient as possible. And the, let's do router six. And in this case, all we're going to do is say um, interface G01146. IP RIP authentication mode. No, we don't even have to do that, I don't think. Uh, let's see, because I have to do it here too. Interface G01146. IP RIP authentication no, I have to do mode, text. Okay, this is where I got stuck. I think I have to do IP rip. Uh, is it in for two router rip? Is it here? No. It has to be on the interface. J01146. Uh, 
Oh, man. Authentication. Yeah, there's somewhere you can actually just type the password. Is it authentication? No. I remember, okay, it's starting to come back to me now. This took me a while to find. I eventually found it, but this is where I tend to get stuck. Uh, no, I think it's under router rip. And all right, I got to think about this a second. Try not to have to. Well, let's go ahead and do it because this is what we would do in a real lab. Right? We'd have to look it up. So let's go to command references, IP routing, rip, and I'm just going to search for password. And it's not going to be there. Um, is it a key? Man, why do not do that? Please do not go to a small window. Um, let's see. Key. Chain 2. Key 2. Key string CCIE set it. Okay, so let's try now. Interface GI zero one one four six IP rip authentication key chain. Ah, uh, that's how we do it, isn't it? Chain two mode text. That's how we do it. I don't know why I stumble on that. So in this case, it's going to be um, key chain chain two key two key string CCIE. Yeah, then IP rip authentication key chain chain two IP rip authentication mode um, text. Yes, that's what we need to do. Okay, so I think that's cool. Let's go ahead and paste this stuff in. Okay, at least I didn't have to revert to the documentation on this one. I'll take some solace in that, and next time I'll get it faster, hopefully. Okay, router six. So let's do show IP rip neighbors. No, show IP rip database. Yeah, where do you get information from rip? Show IP protocols, right? It looks like we're getting updates. Yeah, we're getting updates from, and we got an update 14 seconds ago, so. We are good from router 6 and from router 5, which is cool. So router 5 is really all we need to check. Show IP protocols. Nice. Good deal. And we should see here, look, tunnel 0, chain, right? And we're getting uh, updates from 1, 2, 3, and 4. And let's just check here. 
just for our own sanity, we should see if we have a different keyword. Airfay, uh, no, key chain chain two, key one. Actually, show key, show key chain. It's key two. Okay, key chain chain two. No key one. Key two. Um, key string CCIE two. Clear IP route. Can we clear IP rip? Nope. All right, so now if we do show IP rip data, uh, show IP protocols. All right, chain one and chain two. We changed chain two. Interesting how it truncates this. All right, so if I look at this, this might look like it's active. Let's do debug IP rip. Authentication. And let's see about these updates. 56. See, this is, yeah. All right. Just want to verify for my own sanity. Actually, I could just probably look at the answer key, which I'm about to do. Yeah, that looks good. Keychain. Yep, looks good. So, I don't know why, but there's something in my mind that says that there's some authentication feature. Maybe it's OSPF? When you use clear text authentication, you don't use a keychain. I think you just set a password on the interface itself. I'm probably confusing those. And I could be wrong about that too, but there's some little tickle in my mind about that. All right, so let's check out the next lab for RIP, which is, um, I can take all this off. I may leave it on, we'll see. Well, I need to take it off of this. No IP rip. No, I can't just do that, can I? Chain 2. No IP rip authentication. And I need to do that in router 6 as well. I can leave the other ones if I want to. Interface GI0, 146. No IP rip authentication. It's important to know how to take it off. No IP rip authentication chain chain two. Oh, okay. Does that remove the other command? Show run interface GI zero one. No, it leaves it on there, but it doesn't matter, I guess, if I remove that. Let's see. So let's say I have this, because this sounds like something that might happen in Diag or T shoot. Where you're gonna see this command here. You would think, oh authentication's on, but Maybe it's not if the mode is not on show IP protocols, which is really the only way you kind of see anything about RIP. So there's a chain here, um, but does it say it's in effect? Show IP protocols. Key chain, chain one. It still doesn't say that authenticate... So how do I know authentication is running? How do I verify? Show key? Show interface T0? No. Yeah.
I guess I just really have to know that. Well, let's see. Is it uh, show IP protocols? Yeah, still not getting an update. Yeah, we're still not getting updates at all. So I guess I have to take all of it off. Interface T0, that's good to know. No IP rip authentication. Oh, well, Tunnel's changed it down. It's not happy at all. I don't care about that on Router 6, though. Why does Router 6 have a Tunnel interface? Oh, I did Tunnel. That's why. Ugh. No interface T0. It's GI0 1146. No IP rip um, authentication key chain 2. Let's see if I get updates now. Show IP protocols. Okay, now I'm getting updates. So you have to have both of them off and both of them on. So if you have configure it, you're going to have problems, right? All right, good deal. Okay, all right, folks. So let's look now at the next lab, which I think is, let's pull it up. Uh, did I close that window? I believe that I did. So let's open it back up. And let's go to Docs, Google. Nope, not that one. I need to open Brave, yeah. Like in this browser. Two minutes saved. No, I don't need a tour. Thank you very much. So I just need to go to... Oh, I want to go to Drive. That's the problem. Okay. So let's open up the to-do labs. And I need to note this one being repeated. And I'm going to leave it, I mean, I think conceptually I have it, but I'm just going to leave it there. I need speed and concept still. So today is what? What is today? Wow, I need to... 18th, all right. It's a Saturday, I lose track. Okay, reviewed then. Um, auto summary, all right, let's go to that. And I'm going to go over here to the workbook. Auto summary. All right, new requirements. RIP v2 auto summary. Ah, good old RIP. Configure RIP v2 for auto summarization on R4. No changes in advertisements. All right, so Router 4 is here, and Router 4, if, you know, typically with RIP and even with EIGRP, even though it's now default, I'm so used to typing no auto summary, right? Because, you know, we don't, we work with, um, you know, Summarizing networks at the class boundary is so 1980s, right? So, yeah, we typically do no auto summary. In fact, uh, I don't think with RIP it is turned on by default. Let's see, show run section RIP. Let's take this out and put it back in. Yeah, so as we can see here, router RIP. 
two things you typically do. You type version 2, your networks, and you do no auto summary. So let's take that out. Let's do no router rip. And then let's not do no auto summary. Select that, please. Thank you. So it probably did not put it back in there. It did not. So let's put it back in there. No auto summary. All right, so what it wants to do is do this on router four. No auto. All right, let's look at the routing table first, I guess. Um, show IP route rip. So everyone is pretty much advertising, for example, um, we have a slash 16 here. We have a 150.1.0.0 slash 16. So I'm wondering, I think uh, I'm trying to figure out, if I just type this network statement, 150.1.0.0, what it's going to do, it's going to, this is an, is an interface selection process, right? So I'm going to select all of the interfaces that would fall into that address. And it's going to assume, right, in my thinking, it's going to assume this is a slash, this is a class B network, right? So I'm going to say 150.0.0.0 slash 16. And it is going to look and see which interfaces fall into, well, actually, it's going to say 150.1, right? And it's going to say what interfaces fall into this network address. And I'm going to advertise, I'm going to advertise this into to my neighbors. And here it is, 150.100 is variably subnetted. And I think what has happened here, so we have these slash 32s, but we are also getting, I wonder if this leaked in from router 1. Yeah, we may have leaked this in from router 1 when we took off when we took off the no auto summary. So, tell you what, let's start this from scratch again. Let's just turn off rip on all these routers. And they're all going to say No auto summary. So let's do, um, just to clear things out, let's do no router rip. On router two, because we've got junk floating around now, right? And it take rip would take a long time to to converge, and I ain't got time to wait for all that. So I'm going to turn it off. So now we have no routing table. I wonder though if like six is going to have it. How many routers have rip running? Seven, eight, nine, ten. We have to do it on everybody. This is where I would love to cheat and say you know let's use secure CRT, but. Again, what if this happens in a real lab? Am I going to have the convenience of secure CRT? No, I am not. So, need to learn it the hard way. Telnet viral 1016. Show run section rip. I'm assuming it's running here. It is. And this is borrow one seven zero zero two. Yeah. All right. So eight took it off. 
You know, I could have just waited for this to clear out, but then again, we wouldn't be having as much fun, would we? All right, so now let's put it back on the way it was intended. I tell you that article that I quoted earlier about the attack plan for the lab, there was a lot uh, put in that article about how to use Notepad, um, how to leverage the desktop. So many good tips in, in that article. All right, everybody has to rip again, I believe. Maybe not router nine. Okay. Yeah. All right, so now what they want us to do, let's look at router four. So as we can he as we can see here, we don't have a slash sixteen anymore. <coughs> it's interesting. Like I don't know why it's okay. One fifty one zero zero slash thirty two. I don't even understand this. How do you subnet a slash thirty two? Please answer me that. How do you subnet a slash thirty two? You don't, but, and I'm not going to try to understand all the wording here, but uh, notice some inconsistencies. This is just, it's an older protocol, right, folks? I mean, or maybe I just don't understand it, but I want to take a screenshot of this because um, I find this interesting. See, that says 150.1.0.0.32. And this says 155.100 slash 16 is variably subnetted. These are all 24. I, I can't begin to understand really what the reasoning is for saying that a slash 32 is subnetted. This makes a little more sense. Anyway, what I expect to happen is if I come to router 4 and I say no auto summary, um, I think things are going to work okay if we think about this. All right, so everyone else has specific long match prefixes for all their interfaces. Advertise into RIP and advertised and, and you know they'll be in the routing table so if router 4 comes over here and is misconfigured and is set to no to auto summary in other words yeah the way to cancel out no auto summary is just type auto summary so this kind of becomes a default router right because he's going to have a long match prefix and so people are going to say let's say router 1 needs to get to 150.1.4.4, he's only going to have a, he's not going to have a slash 32 route, but he's going to have a slash 16, and he's going to be fine. He's going to get there. Um, however, what if router 6 and router 4 were set to summarize? Then we got a problem. Then how does router 1 know to get to 151.6.6 versus 151.4.4? He's not. He's going to get two routes, for uh, 150.1.0.0/16, and there'll be equal cost multipath routing, which I believe is what router one will use with RIP, and it'll be you know you're going to lose some packets. In other words, not all your packets, but you're going to lose some of them, and you're going to have degradation in the network, and you're going to have problems, and you know. A consultant is going to come behind you and say, ah, come on, idiot. So anyway, let's do this on one router, and then for fun, we're going to do it on two routers. So on router four, we're going to say router rip auto summary. Then we wait about 10 years for rip to converge. Um, 
you know, unless we do the same thing again, we could do this again on all the routers. That would be fun. Now let's do it because we're impatient. Three, five, six. It doesn't take too long. Okay. So now if I come over here to, let's say a neighbor, router five. Show IP route rip. Okay, so this is interesting. Uh, I think this is just convergence time. Like I should have a router 5. I should have 2.2. .2. I should have 1.1. Yeah, here they are. The only one I don't have is 4.4 .4 in my own. I'm not learning my own through RIP. So, makes sense, right? But I, could, I should still be able to get to... No problem. Network is good. You know, idiot on all four. <laughs> Configured the wrong thing, but hey. Or maybe I did it. Uh, it was oversight, you know. I forgot that command. All right, network is good. Now, let's go over to router six and create a little problem. Let's just make sure. Yeah, one dot four dot four. It's fun when you take a lab a little bit farther and try to break it, right? And you start to think, how can I break the lab? That's when you really, that's when understanding dawns on you, right? I think. IMHO. All right, so everything looks good, right? We could do a tickle TCL script. I call them tickle scripts. I don't think we need to do all that, right? 6.6 .6 is here. Show IP route rip. Yeah. Now, let's have some fun. And let's go to at least my version of fun, right? Router rip, and we're going to say auto summary. And we're going to go to, excuse me, we're going to go to all the other routers, and we're going to do the same thing, right? One, two, three, skip four, five, skip six, seven, eight. That's a quick way to convergence, isn't it? So now if I go to router 5, show IP route rip. Okay. Granted, we need a little time for convergence here. Well, guys, I don't think I've done any packet captures with rip. You know, because that's just one of my life goals is to just look at rip packet captures. I mean... That's when you know you're having fun, right? <laughs> I mean, it's sarcastic. But yeah, let's take a look at some... Just for grins. Let's go to Router 5, Jazz 01. Let's do Traffic Capture. And I don't know... How do I specify? Now, RIP... Let's think about this. Uh, what protocol does RIP use? RIP has its own protocol. And I think I can do... Let's... Let's just gander here. TC, um, it's not TCP. Uh, now this is where I need my Wireshark filters. And I know I could do like EIGRP, right? Shortcuts? No, that's not it. IP Proto. Can I do that? Let's try that. Let's just try to get cute here. IP proto rip. Let's see if it likes it. No, he doesn't like it. Okay, fine. Because uh, rip uses multicast. 224 dot don't ask me. <laughs> uh, all right, so it did not like that. So let's try again. Let's just capture everything and see. We'll see what protocol it uses, right? Let's delete that. And let's try. I need to know a rip packet when I'm looking at one. So let's just capture everything. 
And we did it on router 5, right? So let's just let's clear out router 5. All right. So now if we do show IP route rip, all right, now we have a slash 16. We have two slash 16s, which this we had before. I guess because we're dealing with 24s. But on this one, we had a 00 slash 32, remember? Now look at this. We're getting this 150.1.00 slash 16 from tunnel 0. And I'm assuming that it looks to me we should also be learning one from router 6. Let's look, for example, router 7. He should be learning it from router 6. Show IP uh, rip. Route rip, sorry. Yeah, see, he's learning this from router 6. Router 6 is undoubted, undoubtedly advertising this to router 1. But it looks like they're only going to choose to re-advertise... Let's let's look at the routing table. Show IP route one fifty dot one dot zero dot zero. Yeah, I know. Okay, notice here. So router seven is going to choose the best route. And this is a hop count, right? The dis the metric here is one. Router 7, though, is also going to learn this from, see, Router 4 is going to advertise it to Router 1. 1 will advertise it to 3 and, route, and to Router 7. But this is a hop count of 1. This will be a hop count of 1, 2, 3, 4, maybe, I, I think. 1, 1, 2, 3. Yeah, he's going to have hop count of 1, hop count of 3. He's only going to install the hop count of 1 into the routing table. Right, so next top would be router six. Okay, so what happens on router one? Because router six is going to advertise the slash sixteen, and router four is going to advertise the slash sixteen. Let's see what it looks like there. Show IP route fifty dot one dot zero dot zero. Okay, if we do show IP rip database. Notice it says it's getting this from router 6. 4 should be advertising it as well. Okay, he's getting it from two neighbors. Router 5. So he's learning it from router 5, and he's learning it from router 1, but he should be advertising it as well. Man, I wish you could see more information. Show IP RIP database 150.1.0.0. Huh, it's possibly down. Now, why would that be? Is that the case on router 5? Show IP RIP database. Yeah, see, he's getting it from router 4. And he is getting it from router, from tunnel 0 of router 4. So no one is advertising router... Router one. Okay, so it looks like what's happening here. Router six is advertising to router four. Router four is saying, I am originating this route. So he's probably detecting a loop there, right? Maybe that's why it says that it is possibly down. 
but he's still going to advertise it to his neighbors. He's advertising the router 5. Oh, it came in on this interface. Maybe that's how he knows. Maybe that's why he's not advertising it to router 1. But router 1 should be advertising it to router 5. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell what Rip is doing. Uh, I guess the only way is we need to do a debug, right? Debug. Or we need to look at the packet capture. Let's take a look at our packet capture. And see what router 5 is learning. I want to see what you see, router 5. Okay, so let's see. First of all, how do we... All right, here's the protocol. You know what? I did not say RIP v2. Let me try that over here and see if that works. Let's try to initiate another packet capture on router 1. IP proto rip v2. No, it doesn't like that. Uh, the other thing we could do is 224009. Yeah, that's right. I should know that. 224009. Um. All right, so let's let's filter on that destination. All right. So uh, he is learning. Okay, IP source and destination UDP. Uh, so I have to do IP. Um. I have to do UDP port 520. I'll bet that works. Let's try it. Router 1. GI01. Traffic capture. Let's do UDP port 520. He likes it. Okay. So, a couple points there. If you're not sure how to capture in Wireshark, just do capture everything and then work your way out from there, right? Let's let me update the let me update this capture filter. This is good stuff, guys. Uh IP proto 59. I'll bet there's IP proto for rip. RIP IP Proto. Mm, RIP. Let's see. OSPF is OX59. RIP. I don't see it. Ether rip. Uh, what is is there a five twenty here? No. All right. Well, let's update our document here. Capture filters. Um, we need a heading here. OSPF. BGP. Rip. I'm sure there's already document out here like this, but this is going to be UDP. UDP. Ah, stop. Autocorrect port 520. I need to turn off autocorrect. That is going to drive me nuts. Anyway, I'll do that later. 
All right, so cool. So it looks like router five is receiving a lot of rip V2s and he should be getting, let's see, this is the source. Right, so the source, let's look at router, mm, that's 13.1. Why would it get from 13.1? Okay, here's one from router six. Let's see what router six is sending. This is what I need to know. UDP 520. RIP. Okay, here's our 15100. Next stop is me, right? Or maybe that's how it feels in next stop. Metric of 1. Yeah, this is a metric of 2. Right, it's not going to change the next top, I don't think. Man response. Okay. Good deal. So, 6 is advertising the slash 16. He is advertising it to router 5. Now we need to see is router one advertising it to router five. That would be one fifty five dot one dot zero dot one. One fifty five one dot zero dot one. Where are you? I wonder if router one is authentication working. Maybe I've got some crap left on there. Show IP proto. Oh, it's because it's coming in as... Uh, 155.105, right. But it's coming in... Let's clear this. I'll bet it's come because it's encapsulated, right? Yes, that's why. Yeah, we're using IPsec on that tunnel. Okay, understandable. And I'm not going to be able to see this payload. Okay, makes sense. I always forget about that. So I can at least look at the those that are coming in from router 4. Two two four zero zero nine. Actually, let's do forty five dot one. Gigabit zero one, router five. That's right. Forty five dot four. There we go. Plus filter selected. So this is everything I'm learning from router four. And I'm getting rip updates like every so many seconds, right? And I'm only getting two. Yeah, that's correct. I'm only getting two subnets. Two prefixes. All right. The capture, uh, screen cap that. So anyway, uh, we should now have some routing problems. That that was the whole point of this. You know, we did this on router four. We did this on router six. So now I would expect a router like uh, router five. Let's see if he can get to ping one fifty dot one dot six dot six. Yeah. We cannot. Now, if we go back to router six, uh, router rip auto uh, no auto summary, then we should be good to go. Let me take it a second.
It may take it a while. I think we're good there, though. Uh, there's one other lab having to do a summarization. I think we can move on to that. Let me just look at the lab key here. Yeah, auto summary. And you could do a debug IP rip to, to see those. All right, I probably took that lab a lot longer than it needed to go, but, you know, it's all about learning, right? That's the point. So let's upload this document to Google Drive. This is a new capture. Before I forget, this is a uh, rip auto summary. That's what we'll call this one. And I'm just going to have to upload upload a file. Here we go. I should probably set up some sort of sync. The problem is I'm already using Google Drive on my computer for another account. So I don't know if you can do that or not. We'll find out, won't we? Okay, so that's good to go. And now let's talk about the next lab. Uh, let's, yeah, there it is. It can ping now. See? Router rip, uh, no router rip. No auto summary. Let's undo that. And let's go back to the next lab, uh, which has to do with summaries as well. Let me find this next page in the workbook. And then after this one, we will take a break. Here's RIP. Manual summarization. Yeah. As you can see, I was struggling with that a little bit. Okay. R5. Generate summary route. Or L0 prefixes of R1 to R7. Send update only to R8. Ensure summary does not overlap. With any IPv4 prefix that R5. Ensure the summary does not overlap with any IPv4 address that there does not have a longer prefix for. I think that's misworded in the workbook. I think what that means is ensure your summary does not overlap with any prefix that R5 has a longer prefix for. So if we look at that, first we got to do our summary, right? If I do a show IP route rip, so I want to summarize zero, um, let's see, one through seven. And I want, want to avoid I want to avoid trying to summarize um, 8 and 9. Generate a summary route. Okay, that's fine. We can send a summary route to router 8 for his own loopback. That's not a big deal. So I think I could do 150.1.0.0 slash... Let's see, what is that in the third octet? Uh, we don't want to get above eight. So that's going to be, let's see, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's going to be eight, zero, zero, zero. So we can do, we can split it here, right? So that would be the two, 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 four, two, forty, two, forty-eight. Let's see, zero, one twenty-eight, two twenty-four, 
252. Does it sound right? One twenty eight, yeah. Two twenty four. Two twenty four, two forty, two forty eight, two fifty two, two fifty four. No, that's not right. Two fifty five, I need to count backwards. Two fifty five, two fifty four, two forty eight. Two fifty five, two fifty four, two forty eight, two forty. So I think we do two forty dot zero, and that would be what would the address be one fifty dot one dot zero dot zero. Yeah. So that would encompass one fifty dot one dot um one through seven. It would be zero through seven, wouldn't it? So we can do a summary route. This would be our summary, and. I think we want to do that with a distribute list, right? So with a distribute list, we can do that against a prefix list. I believe we can do prefix list with rip. Let's try it. So let's see, router five. IP prefix list permit or sequence five permit. 150.1.0.0 slash, oh, we can do a slash here, which would be 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, 21. All right, I'll just have to double check that. I need more practice. And um, router rip. Oh, we do, now rip, we do on the interface, don't we? Distribute list, IP prefix list, the list. It's probably going to have to be a route map, isn't it? Let's see. Router, rip, distribute list, prefix, yeah. Distribute list prefix D list. Out. Yeah. Distribute list prefix D list. Out. And this is going to go GI0158. I think that's it. Let's see. All right, so show IP protocols. Here we have JS0150 filled by previous D list. Default is not set. Uh, we're missing something. This generated a summary route, send update only to router 8. So it does not overlap. So we need to be sending the other prefixes. Sequence 10 permit 0 .0 .0 .0 0 0.0.0.0 slash 0. Let's see, 32. Yeah, 32. 32. 32. 32. Yeah, we need to do that as well, don't we? Now if we do... Oh, are we still running our capture? Oh, we are. All right, we can end this one. We can kill that capture, and then let's kill this one. You know, the capture is going to do what you tell them to do. Oh, did I stop an interface? No. Well, 
links. Interfaces. All right, we're good. So, so now let's look at router eight, four, five, six, seven, six, seven, eight. Show IP route rip. All right, we're still getting a slash sixteen. Let's do this. Um, let's capture on router eight. I want to see. I want to see this summary route. UDP Proto five twenty. Huh? Do I have to do IP proto? Probably do. Thought we did that before. I'm crazy here, guys. Going bonkers. Put me on the paddy wagon. Driven to insanity by the CCIE study program. Yeah, this probably has to be... Oh, UDP port. Yes. That's right. My bad. Router 8. UDP port 520. Do they have a special paddy wagon for the uh, CCIE candidates who go nuts? If not, they need it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say um, no router rip. Say router rip v version 2. And no auto. Yeah. Okay. All right, let me take a second. Did I do that right? There we go. Okay. So he is still sending He's still sending all the individual. And he is not sending the... Okay. I think I know what I need to do here. You know, you can't do a... It looks like the summary... First of all, the summary is not being sent. Uh, let's do a debug here. Router 5. Debug IP rip. Um, show. All right. Let's see what it's doing here. Rip build update entries. One fifty. Yeah, I don't see a slash twenty one at all. So I'm missing something about doing this summarization. Summarization route, router, rip. We do it on the interface, don't we? I know that's how you do it in... Yeah. IP rip. Yep. 
Yeah, that's not it. Yeah, offset list is the metrics. Distribute list. I mean, there's not really a lot you can do under here. Okay, so it's going to say, what am I going to distribute out? I'm going to permit this, but guess what? I don't have this. Yeah, that's just what I permit in or out. How do I summarize? That's not the right approach. Cisco Docs, save me. Cisco Docs, save me. Please save me, Cisco Docs. Yeah, I definitely had trouble on this one. <laughs> we can see why. IP routing, rip. Uh, that's command reference. Uh, I don't know if that's... Don't know if there's a configuration guide. Let's see. IP routing, rip. Configuration guide is going to be 150 documents. Uh, let's see if it has summary... Route summarization. Any associated child routes, right. When RIP determines that summary just is required, a summary entry is created in the IP in the RIP routing database. As long as there are child routes for summary, the address remains in the routing database. When the last child route is removed, the summary entry also is removed from the database. This method handling reduces the number of entries in the database, blah, blah, blah. IP summary address. Oh, that is it. That is it. Shoot. IP summary address. RIP. Well, yeah, that's how you do EIGRP. Okay. So this we don't need. No IP prefix list. Yeah, wrong approach. That's okay. What we need here is IP summary address RIP. Uh, divide 248 or zero. I believe that's what it was. 240. Okay, let's try that. Nope. Router, rip, IP summary, no, interface level. It's just 0158. IP summary address rip that one is zero zero to uh, to uh, two forty. Can I do a no? That's yeah. I have to put the mask here. Forty two forty dot zero. Okay, man. Yeah, this one needs more practice. Um, that's good. We're gonna continue to review it. So now. Router 8, we should still be running that capture. There it is. Okay, so these should expire. These should eventually expire from the database. Um, let's stop the cap. I'm curious if there's any other way to denote in the packet itself in the rip update that it is a summary route. Like, does rip tell you 
it's a summary route, probably does not. Not like it does in other protocols, right? So let's go here. Where's my capture? Yeah. Let's stop. And restart it. What does the pencil do? Oh, edit it. Makes sense. All right, so now... Yeah, it's taking too long to watch those disappear. So that's why I want to do this. Router rip version 2 network t.1.0.0. Okay. Ripple. And we want to make sure, too, which ones it's filtering out. You know, did I get the correct summary? Because we've got 10.10. .10. I should see 9.9, .9 though, as well. What if I did my mask correctly? Okay, here's a 00 slash 20. And let's see if we get 9. If we don't, then we, we screwed up. Should be a slash 21. I think it should be a slash 21. Yeah, I'm getting other updates from router 9. But I'm not yet getting... So let's let's redo that. Router five, router no interface level, just zero one fifty eight, which I like. I like the interface level. D dot one dot zero dot zero two five two five two eight dot zero. Show run interface just zero one. I think you only do one. Oh no! Take that back. Huh, I didn't know that, so that's good to know. Let's leave them both on there. It would be a dumb idea to configure that, but hey. Let's test our dumb idea, right? Let's see what it looks like now in router 8. Yeah, now we see. Okay, problem is, though, if we leave that, we still don't get 9. 150.1.999, so we got to take it out. Uh, interface, jazz zero one fifty eight, and we're gonna do this. Interface jazz zero one fifty eight. There we go. Now, at some point, we should get nine. Yeah, that's going to take a while. I'm going to stop this capture. I don't want it to be too huge. And we're going to download this bad boy. I just want to see the summary address, what it looks like. And we'll just wait for that to converge. Hey, UDP filter, UDP port 520. We want the second one. Assuming, right? 23, yeah. Cool, our Wireshark uh, filter capture is working. And we want to see from 58.5. Metric 16. Wow, that's old. Okay, 015100. 
This looks like a slash 24. There's a 240. That's the old one we were getting rid of. Let's go up a little earlier. 240. Okay. Well, basically my point is I wanted to see... Well, that is old. It's aging that one out. I guess that's how it ages it out, right? Maybe. Okay, here's our 240. Yeah, we got 200. Zero, zero. There's a 240. And this is a slash 24. Uh, what's the metric of one? Where's my 248? Okay, I'm going to assume it had not had time yet to advertise that update. Let's see. Let's see what's going on here. Okay, I've got a 21. I just must not have caught it. And I've got nine. So, yeah, that's what I needed. Good deal. Um, but as we can tell from this, there's really no way to know. Let's look earlier. Metric of one. There's no way to know this is a summary route it went on the receiving end, right? Unlike the other protocols, I'm pretty sure. So I'm going to take a screen cap of that. And we're going to do... Yeah, we're going to call this a summary route. Let me check the key. I think that's all we need, though. Yeah, just, just two commands. Interface JS0158 and a 248.0. Good deal. All right, folks. Well, thank you very much for... Um, watching i'm going to post this pcap and up in the google docs in case you want to take a look at it thanks for joining me this saturday afternoon evening um i'm going to take a little break get a little food i may or may not come back uh, but i'll be in the discord so check me out there and either way we're going to be doing a good bit of labs tonight and tomorrow throughout the day hopefully uh, as long as not a lot of interruptions should be doing a lot of labs it may start mpls and in fact i think i'm going to say right now Probably do my first MPLS lab tomorrow. So looking forward to that. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Be sure to sign up for Discord. Check out the Google Docs. Hit that uh, alarm bell so you get notifications on YouTube when the stream comes online. And, of course, uh, subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. Like this video and all that stuff. Twitter, Instagram. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's been great to, to have you. Appreciate you hanging out in the chat. Have a great rest of your Saturday night. Bye-bye.